Hello and welcome to my channel In Search of Wonder. My name is Anne and this is my weekly wrap up. Hello, I am here in Tennessee. I took a little road trip to celebrate my niece's graduation from college and uh, we are renting with my husband's side of the family a, uh, actually they rented and we we're just kind of like along for the ride, um, a huge Airbnb in Sevierville, Tennessee, and uh, having a fantastic time with family. If you hear noise, there's a whole bunch of people here about to have a party to um, celebrate her accomplishments, my niece's accomplishments. But I did finish a couple of books yesterday morning, and this is the first opportunity I've had to um, do record a quick update about that. Um, before I get to that, um, this morning, my husband and I, you know, whenever I go somewhere, I have to check out a local coffee shop. So we went to one called the Tennessee Grind and got myself a coffee there. I splurged a little, got an almond milk latte with some flavor in it. But here's the thing. They had this super cute little sign, which I'll show you a little clip here in a second. Um, they had a super cute little sign when you go up to order your drinks and it was like the bookish edition or something like that. And all of the titles of the drinks were inspired by things related to reading or books or whatever. So I ordered the one that was called like Second Chance or something. And the barista was like, what? I was like, it's on the sign over there. And I looked at it and I double checked. It's like, yeah, it's, it says Second Chance Edition or something like that. And she's like, what are the flavors in that? <laughs> And it's like um hazelnut cinnamon and uh kind of takes away of the pleasure of it you know you give this fun bookish name but then you don't even know what that means anyways it was kind of funny it gave me a little bit of a chuckle so to the books that i finished my first christmas read of the year you make it feel like christmas by tony shiloh and by the way Tony Shiloh is a local author to me, and I just realized this Saturday she is having um, an author signing at a local bookstore to me, and I'm a little bit like, mm, because this Saturday, can I tell you, we are leaving Tennessee early in the morning, driving back to Virginia, going to get back to Virginia mid-late afternoon, doing a quick change, literally turning around, bringing the boys, dropping them off at their youth group Christmas party, driving across town to go to my staff Christmas party, going back to pick up the boys from their youth group Christmas party and going to my other niece's birthday party. That's our Saturday. And that is when Tony Shiloh is going to be doing an author signing like half an hour away from me or less. Really? Couldn't you pick a different day? Because I don't think I can convince my husband to squeeze that into our Saturday afternoon. Anyways, unfortunate. But anyway, I enjoyed the book. It was a fun read. And, uh, you know, total Hallmark. Hallmark all the way. Like, it's like she set out to write a Hallmark story complete with the traditional Hallmark Christmas story storyline. And she accomplished the purpose. My favorite thing about it was... Um, that it is set in dc and i live like not far from dc and all of the christmas things that they do in that story are christmas things that i do that i have done we don't do all of them every year but we're very familiar with it like the zoo lights and going to handles messiah at the national cathedral and um the restaurants she mentions are like you know popular restaurants in dc and not necessarily i've been to them but like I know what she's talking about. It's so cool to read a book set um, in a place I'm familiar with and with experiences that I have personally experienced. So that was the best part of it for me. I really enjoyed that. Other than that, it is what it is. It's a Hallmark cheesy romance Christmas kind of story. So um, she accomplishes that beautifully. I gave it three, three and a half stars, I think, um, which is what I typically give, um, you know, an average romance novel kind of story. Uh, so the other book i finished was a library book that i borrowed digitally let me pull that one up and that is a mystery of mysteries the death and life of edgar Allan poe 
by David, I'm sorry, Mark Davidziak. And um, I believe Mark Davidziak is a journalist. And he investigated the death and all of the information and the evidence that we have available about Edgar Allan Poe's death to see if he could come to any conclusions. And spoiler alert, there are no conclusions. There's no conclusive evidence to say one way or the other how he died. However, there is, um, using your common sense and logic, you can say, okay, it's probably likely that he died um, from tubercular meningitis with possibly some other complications thrown in. A very interesting twist to the story there. Uh, so it seems logical, but there's no way to prove it conclusively. So it's going to remain a mystery officially until the end of time. Uh, it was good book. I love stories like that, like, that investigate like real mysteries and try to untangle the knots of things in the past, like, um, you know, examining the evidence that's available. And, um, I, I really enjoy that kind of story and that kind of journalism. But, um, what, what frustrated me a little bit about this book and kept me from giving it five stars was that it just, it kept going back and forth and it was really hard to track. It did not just consistently go chronologically through his life. Like the first chapter was about the months leading up to his death. And then the next chapter, the next, somebody's clapping. I think they're playing a pool, game of pool or something. <laughs> um, then the next chapter would, was about like the beginning of his life and his parents' history. And then we go to another chapter back to the months preceding his death and, um, and the things that happened to him in the months preceding his death. So every chapter flips like that. And I found it very difficult to track. I know I was very busy at the time. So that's part of it. Like I was reading like literally in snatches of five, 10 minutes at a time when I could grab a minute or like on my lunch break or something. So I was reading in snatches of time uh, so that probably complicated it even further, but even so, I really would have preferred a straightforward chronological glance through the evidence. Um, it would have been a lot easier to understand, and I think it would have made more sense, and I would have been able to keep better track of all of the different people that he had relationships with and interacted with, etc. But it was still very interesting. I learned a lot about Edgar Allan Poe and his life, and um, it was very interesting. I am... Once I finished those two books, I picked up like four. Oh, I, I did finish one other. This is not really an interesting cover, but this is what I read, He That Should Come by Dorothy Sayers, which is the Advent read-along with um, Christy um, from Dostoevsky in Space. Why? I can't think of her channel name, but I think that's what it is. And then um, several other channels are um, hosting this read-along. And I read it yesterday on the way down to Tennessee. And it was very good. I highlighted um, a few quotes in it. Um, one is what one of the um, one of the wise men said in the beginning of the story: "This is the end, or else the beginning of all things." I like that quote. Um, I liked the, the the style of the play. So, so it's a drama or a play, and I liked how though in the beginning with the wise men, it was very much almost Shakespearean in the way that they were speaking and the way that it was set up. So that was really cool. But then it kind of became more of a um, modern, I guess, if you can call something modern that was written almost a hundred years ago. Um, and it was, um, you know, like a, like a more, more modern language, I guess, um, after that. And it was interesting. She had like um, a Greek gentleman, um, a, a kind of secular Jew there and a Pharisee and a merchant, a Jewish merchant. And, um, and then of course, like the landlord and the landlady in Bethlehem, etc. They're all gathered in one place and they're, you know, comparing notes on religion and the prophecies about Jesus. And, um, and then the shepherds, the shepherds, um, I like how she did that because that was, they were the most um, insightful group who uh, brought to bear their their perspective on the prophecies and even though they were the most humble which you could tell you know in the way she structured their speech and the whole the whole situation with the shepherds um, it's obvious that they were like the humblest and the poorest and the least educated of the grouping of people that were there but they had the most insightful things to say about the prophecies of of the Messiah 
And then you had, um, of course, Jesus being born and everyone's various responses to that. There's a Roman centurion who's one of the characters. So it's very interesting um, nativity play. I enjoyed it um, a lot. And uh, it was a fun, very easy, quick read. I'd love to hear the um, <clears throat> the BBC radio production. I don't know if that's available anywhere. To have, does anybody know if like, that's something that you can get? I don't know. I, I kind of did a quick search, but I didn't look really extensively. Anyway, so I read that also on the way down yesterday, and I started to read a couple of other books as well. I am buddy reading this one with a subscriber and which is so fun. I am um, on page 18 so far and I had already highlighted a lot of stuff the first time I read through it now and now like different things are jumping out to me and it's been very interesting. Um, we've already been like comparing notes about what we have been reading and it's fun to read it with someone else and to share thoughts on that. So I'll share more when I um, um, have finished more of it. Uh, we're, we're, we're Ooh, there's like four parts to it and we're working through the first part this week I'm about halfway through the first part or so I also picked up a Christmas party by, jo by Georgette Hare which Miriam sent to me thank you Miriam for winning her giveaway for her second year anniversary on booktube and I started that and uh, my sister actually is currently reading it at the same time she's a Georgette Hare fan like me and so um we were also comparing notes on that. Um, she warned me that there's a lot of um, slang and also that it's set, it seems to be set like in the twenties. I'm not exactly sure, but it seems to be like in the twenties in England. Not my super favorite time period, but um, so far it's interesting. Right now I'm not very far. I'm just trying to get keep track of the various characters in the story, figure out what's going on here. Um, and it's, I think it's going to be like a, a murder mystery at a Christmas house party is what it's going to end up being. Um, and yes, I also started reading Rebecca and that is a reread for me. That's for Remember December. And so far, like blank slate. This is for the prompt of something you've basically forgotten. Yeah, I've completely forgotten it. And I know I read it. I read it probably 15 to 20 years ago. Um, I can't remember if it was before or after I got married, but somewhere in there I read it. And nothing. Now, of course, I'm only on like the second chapter, but nothing is ringing a bell here. <clears throat> the, the, she's describing the house Mandalay in her dream in the first chapter. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it, but nothing is ringing a bell. Literally nothing. There's like... It's like my brain deleted that file um, a long time ago. So have to uh, replace that file <laughs> this time. And I will try to pay more attention as I'm reading this time so that it will keep the file a little bit longer going forward. So, all right. Um, I think probably the party is about to get underway now. And so I am going to close off for now. I'll be back with more updates and probably some clips from our trip. Uh, we also went this morning to a Bucky's. So... I don't know if you know anything about Bucky's. They don't have them where I live in Virginia, not yet anyways, but they're a big deal down here in the South. Huge, massive gas station, convenience smart place that's kind of like a grocery store and a novelty store and a food court and a gas station. Not a novelty, so it's not the right word that I'm thinking of, but like, I don't know what the right word is for what I'm trying to say. But anyways, all like multiple types of things all rolled into one with <clears throat> enough, with bathrooms, like enough stalls for 30 people to go to the bathroom, you know, and enough gas station stations for 50 people to gas up at the same time, etc. They're just huge, massive, it's like a whole experience. And they have a whole line of their own packaged foods and snacks and whatever and they have a whole food court you can get barbecue or baked goods or whatever you want um to eat anyway so we went there just to say that we've been to Bucky's and so now we have been to Bucky's it was fun so I'll see you next time
It is Saturday afternoon. We are back from our quick trip to Tennessee and I have an hour and a half before I need to leave again to go to Christmas parties. So um, just a quick minute to um, update. I finished reading A Christmas Party by Georgette Hare. Um, and this was my first, I can't remember what all I said about it in the previous clip, but this is my first mystery by Georgette Hare. So I have previously mostly read, um, only read Regency novels by her. So this was my first, um, mystery story by her set in the thirties, late thirties, I guess, probably, um, at a manor house in England. And it was very funny, very witty, um, as her Regency novels also are. Um, maybe not quite as much as I was used to in those. I tabbed a bunch of like funny or witty things in there. Um, and it was an interesting story. It kind of like felt like you were dropped in the middle of a clue game um like the christmas version with um you know the various characters gathered there any one of them could possibly have been responsible and then there was a very starchy butler who was um quite amusing and all his starchiness and um yeah my favorite part of this story was one of the characters Maud. she was reading a book and the book proved to be an important element of this story. And it was about Elizabeth, the Empress of Austria, who happens to be someone that I find quite um, intriguing from history. And I have read a biography or so about her. There's a German musical about her, which will not surprise anybody that that was the first thing that piqued my interest in Elizabeth. Anyway, so um, one of the characters in this book, much to everyone else's great annoyance, is reading this biography of Elizabeth, Empress of Austria, and is regaling everyone around her, whether they like it or not, with the facts that she is learning about Elizabeth's life and her son Rudolph and the tragedy that ended his life, etc., etc., etc. And um, the whole way through the book, I'm thinking, you know, everybody's so irritated with her and then she loses the book and she's convinced that someone in the house just took it from her just to make her stop talking about it. And I'm just sitting here like, I'll talk to you about it, Maude. I'll talk to you about it. I like talking about the Empress Elizabeth of Austria. But anyways, um, so I f did not figure out how the murder was done. I had a pretty strong suspicion of who did it almost from the beginning, but I just, I wasn't convinced because I didn't know how it was done. And it wasn't until the end of the book that you figure out how it was done. So, um, but it was good. Um, kept me reading. It, it was maybe a little bit slow in the beginning. Um, there's quite a bit of um, like just setting up the characters and the, the the setting and everything before it actually happens and then the mystery starts to unravel. Um, so, but it was it was good. It was fun to read at Christmas time. Um, about a house party when I was at a house party of sorts, the modern version, the whole various family members and extended family and friends renting an Airbnb for a few days. Um, so anyways, it was a fun story and I finished that while we were there. I also, um, started reading The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon Woolwork and I am more than halfway through that one. And I have gotten, uh, more than 25%, maybe about a third of the way through Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, um, kind of bouncing back between them depending on what mood I'm in and still working through the gospel primer for Christians. Um, I had planned to get through part one of that by this week, but I was just wanting to 
savor it like I don't want to read too much at one time because there's so much truth in each little paragraph that I want to stop and you know like think about it and let it sit and sink in a little bit before I move on so um still working through that but it is very good enjoying that reread as far as Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier goes interestingly the only thing so far that has rung a bell for me is the mention of rhododendrons and I remember when I read it before that I looked up rhododendrons because of course I knew the name of the flower but I couldn't picture in my mind what they looked like so I remembered looking up rhododendrons last time I read it and now again as I'm that was the first thing that I read about I was like oh yeah that rings a bell I remember um I remember that and I seem to vaguely also recall the character of her sister-in-law um who's kind of like a brusque not quite manlyish, but sort of manlyish character. Anyway, so there's a few faint things that, you know, are resonating in my mind that, you know, are like, yeah, this seems familiar. I feel like I've read this before. But most of it, blank slate. Reading it like it's new for the first time. So um, that is what I have going on. I have um, a couple clips to share of the fun that we had. Um, the some of us in the party went to a um, escape room and the rest of us just did a little walking around and window shopping, shopping on this place in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee called The Island, which I had never been to before. It's kind of fun, definitely like big old tourist trap. And then, um, but it was fun, we had a good time. Um, I kind of wanted to go on the Ferris wheel, but in the end, um, I mostly just wanted to go back to the house and relax after we'd walked around for a while. So, um, and yeah, I think that was the main, the main other thing that we did. We had breakfast at a really beautiful restaurant that was in the Dream More Resort by uh, Dolly Parton. And um, it was really nice, very uh, cute little restaurant and really good food. And we were there with uh, the whole family so that was fun and i think the the decorations the christmas de decorations were so beautiful there so i took some video of that and we'll tackle that on at the end so that is for my update this week um and i will try to get that out this up and posted as soon as i can when i have a minute so anyways um that's it for now see you next time Thank you.